we've got chloroethene can be polymerized to form polychloroethene. So chloroethene is two carbons with a double bond, HH on one carbon, HCl on the other. And the double bond is broken to make single bonds either side and they've all joined together. You can see the chloroethene that's been there as a monomer joined together as a series of repeating units. Chloroethene has a melting point of minus 154. PVC, this is polychloroethene here, the polymer, sometimes called PVC or polyvinyl chloride, melts at a temperature much over 100 degrees C. Explain why PVC melts at a higher temperature than chloroethene. Well, remember, chloroethene is a small molecule. Two carbons join with a double bond, HH on one carbon and HCl on the other. And it's only when they form a polymer that they join together to make, to make a large molecule. So there's one mark for saying it makes a large molecule. And then a large molecule is going to have more atoms, more electrons, more stronger van der Waals forces between the molecules. So one mark for saying the molecules are larger in polychloroethene or PVC. Um, and that there are stronger van der Waals forces between the molecules in the PVC polymer, um, so the melting point's higher. The structure shows that uh, a molecule that's been used in PVC deduce the number of hydrogen atoms in the molecule. So what you've got to do is you've got to recognise every carbon's on a corner. There's carbons on each of these corners, and the H's, the hydrogen atoms, have been left off. But every carbon has four bonds, so what you've got to do is you've got to go through and make sure that there's four bonds off every carbon. Some will need none, say for example that's already got four bonds, that's got three, so that'll need an additional one, that's got four bonds, that's not a carbon. This carbon here has got two bonds, so it needs two more. This carbon at the end needs three more. And when you draw them on, it will look a little bit like that. I've drawn the red bonds to each of the H's. You count them up and there are 38 hydrogens that are needed to make sure every carbon has got four bonds. Use your understanding of the properties of PVC to explain whether you'd expect to find a plasticizer in PVC for ins to insulate electrical cables. Well, what a plasticizer does is it gets between the PVC molecules. So it gets in between the molecules and prevents the uh, van der Waals bonds or, or at least weakens the van der Waals bonds between the molecules. So what it does is it makes it more flexible. It makes it bendy. So would you expect that plasticizer to be used in insulated electrical cables? Yes, plasticizers are used to soft molecules. The plasticizer is present in the plastic insulation to make it bendy. So that's your answer. A section of polymer, um, the polymer polychloroprene, a synthetic rubber is shown below. So I've got carbons at each of these points here. I've got a double bond and I've got some CLs. You need to recognize the repeating unit. Well, if I take this bit here down to a CL, the next time it appears is here. And the next time it appears is here. So the cutoff point is here. So I can see there's a repeating unit going from here round here. And there's a repeating unit going from here round to here to this point here and then there's a repeating unit going round to here so i've recognized the three repeating units so now i just need to draw one of them so i've got a carbon to carbon to cl carbon to carbon to cl a double bond to a carbon to a carbon to a carbon so i've drawn that section there and I've drawn the displayed formula, so rather than skeletal, I've drawn displayed with all of the bonds and the H's showing. It's important, it mentions here you need the displayed formula for the repeating unit, so it's important to draw all the bonds in.